we wanted to sort of not spoof the genre in any way, really embrace it and show our affection for it, but bring characters to life within the genre who are themselves relatable, people who feel like they could have been um, friends of yours or uh, people who are in your adventuring party if you play Dungeons and Dragons, imperfect people with, uh, with humor and flaws. And what's so natural about approaching it from a somewhat comedic perspective is the fact that when you're playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons, there's always humor involved. We so. definitely had Hugh Grant in mind when we were writing this. Yeah. And one of the most gratifying things was he told us, um, I should tell you, I hate everything and I loved your script. So right off the bat, we knew we had sort of hit that sweet spot. We tried to delve into what's the most emotional journey we can kind of devise for each of these people. They're all, as I said, flawed. The emotional component to us is, is absolutely crucial to, to nail down. Uh, because otherwise, as funny as a character can be, if you don't really care about them, what they say doesn't matter. We sort of came up with a direction that hadn't been in the script in talking to Chris Pine prior to, um, to shooting it. Um, this notion that he's sort of this uh, unflappable, positive energy coach, like we talked about the coach of the Bad News Bears a little bit. No matter how much goes wrong, he's just gonna keep pushing them to do what they have to do. And that really defined who Edgen became in the movie. He has trouble tapping into any kind of real earnest emotions himself, uh, so that when he's finally confronted with them, basically coming to terms with the, the mistakes that he's made, um, you understand why uh, it's so difficult for him to, to actually reach that point as a character. We always talked about the Zank character that Reggae plays as if he has walked into the wrong movie. He's from a more serious movie that's shooting on the next stage and he stumbled into this band of idiots. Um, and so I think that that just automatically kind of triggers Chris's character to be annoyed by him. What's so great about Justice is that like he, he, he totally embraced this innocence that's in, in Simon and this absolute winning like likability. We couldn't have thought of anyone better for the role. He was so, he was so great in it and, and, and people really respond to it. Even when we first meet him and he's, he's so imperfect and not at all brave, it just gives him somewhere to go. We also wanted to definitely, uh, pay our, our respects to the fans and, and what they wanted out of this, this type of movie. Um, so we went through the list of some of the most iconic monsters and, and creatures and really tried our damnedest to embrace as many of them as we could. We want to give them the D&D &D movie that, that they've been hoping for this yeah. whole time. As it is in the game of D&D, &D, I think you rely on your, your fellow uh, campaign members to um, step in and fill in the weaknesses that you have. And so it was clear that, um, that Holga, Michelle, Michelle's character, was the physically strongest of the group, um, but, uh, but she's not always, she's kind of brute force. She's not thinking strategically. That's kind of what Edgen brings. But, we tried to give everybody their moment to shine so that there's no one character who's always saving the day. It's a fun dynamic between her and Simon where she, she is this kind of level-headed, confident character that doesn't have to prove anything to herself or anyone else, whereas Simon is the exact opposite of that. I think she also kind of comes under the influence of these band of, of uh, lunatics, and you start to see her slowly getting on board with their way of thinking and doing things because she's always been kind of the high road noble person and uh, she sees that, all right, maybe these losers aren't so bad. I hope that this movie really is for everybody because we, um, we try to approach it as we do all our movies. It's just a great sort of uh, adventure with some characters that you're gonna care about and hopefully love by the end of the movie. And I think that is the that is the ultimate challenge and that's the ultimate thing, hurdle that we wanna hopefully pull off is attracting people that would never go and see a Dungeons and Dragons movie. Hopefully they hear through word of mouth that like it it doesn't it isn't just a total nerd fest. There's there are a lot of elements to it and and hopefully people will be surprised 
in that sense. Reggae also really found the core of the character. I mean, he just embodies this noble paladin character perfectly. And it was always super fun. I mean, we were never disappointed with the, the, the takes, the reads, the way he did them. And again, like going back to game mechanics and playing, you know, these campaigns, there's always that player that takes it a little too seriously, that gets frustrated when people start joking around and, and uh, just treats it all with this sort of solemn um, realism. And I think that's, that's definitely what, what Zenk embodies. We knew we wanted it to be um, in the Forgotten Realms. We wanted it to be along the Sword Coast. And, um, and we also wanted it to be a heist movie at its core. And uh, so that kind of directed us along a certain pathway. It's a huge open-ended world that you could tell thousands of stories from. So we had to sort of pick our players and then pick our journey um, and where specifically we wanted to go on the map because you can't go everywhere. It's such a vast world. One of the real benefits of having a directing partner is that you can kind of divide and conquer in many ways. Um, and especially when you're dealing with an ensemble cast where you have multiple ideas and notes that you want to get across to be able to just split up and start talking to each individual actor and, and then camera department, um, it, it definitely made things a lot easier um, once we you know, aligned what we wanted it to be. So, Wizards of the Coast, um, before we, uh, while we were still early on in the development of the movie, we went up to Seattle and spent a couple of days at the headquarters of the Wizards of the Coast, who are the makers of all things Dungeons and Dragons. And, um, and some of them are sort of iconic figures because they've been doing it for many years and have designed so much of the world. And it was pretty cool to be able to sit with them and share kind of creative ideas and, and get their sign off on some of the things that we were talking about. Yeah. And they were very uh, helpful and flexible in terms of sort of stretching some of the lore to accommodate what we were proposing to do. They weren't dug in in a way that said, no, 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 you can't do any of that. They tried with us to figure out how to make it work. Which is totally true to playing Dungeons and Dragons, you know, I mean, they, they create this template for players to, to, you know, work off of, but totally encourage, you know, your imagination. And so they were, they were monumental in helping us flesh out the world and, and figure out some of the specific creatures and, and encounters that our characters would have. Um, and, and to get their seal of approval, by the way, was the most gratifying thing. Like they felt after watching it, they told us like, this is so in line with the spirit of the game. And that is exactly what we were setting out to do. Um, and what's great is the spirit of the game is like our cinematic spirit, you know, where it's, 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 you're having fun and you're not taking things too seriously. I was introduced to Dungeons and Dragons, the game, when I was a kid, my brother, uh, was very much into it and he was a dungeon master and I remember he had graph paper and he would design these very elaborate maps and castles and things and he would let me play with him and uh, he was an older and so I was always the, the kid at the table and usually they would kill me off but I remember it sort of lighting a fuse a spark in me that um, you know that you could be so creative in the context of a game like this. I discovered Dungeon, I knew it had existed since I was a little kid, but I actually started playing when I was thir when I was 14 and uh, on the set of Freaks and Geeks, where my character is an avid player and being the, the obnoxiously method actor that I was, uh, not really, but I, I wanted to play because it seemed like a lot of fun. And so they set up a game for us and the cast uh, to, 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 to try it out. And again, it immediately ignited this, this spark in me. Um, it's so fun to be able to, to play a game, but also be creative while you're doing it.